Morning. As I'm sure you guys know, I've generally been soul searching, doing some walkabout in life. And I decided, you know, I may come back to YouTube just for a while, if only for a while, do some shorts. So today, I think I'm going to come up with a new series called The Ark. Conceptually, how this works is very simple. Many of you are familiar with the story of Noah's Ark, or at least you should be if you're in the black community. After all, many of us spend most of our lives, or earlier part of our lives, in the church. But this isn't going to be a Bible story. But I'm going to use the analogy to illustrate a specific point. And after this video series, if you have not understood what I've been trying to show you, if you have no idea of what I've been saying, or you just flat out reject it, then when the door of the ark slams shut, it's going to be me and my kinfolk, and some people who are skinfolk, and two of everything I need to bring is going to be sitting in safety and security. And you'll be at the door, knocking and banging, trying to get in, and I'll simply just tell you, the top of the ark. If I open that door, we all die. Sorry, but it's better you than me. Now let me get on with the point of today's video. Essentially, many of you people always like to bring up this concept of the community. Uplifting. Let's just call it what it is. It's job. It's jibber jabber. It's shuckle bucking, soft shoeing, tap dancing, and just play out avoiding what's wrong. What is wrong that you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you. It's the inability to face problems. Look, we all have issues. And I'm not saying in, 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 in particular, no particular way that one issue is lesser than another. But when measured as a group, as a whole, there has to be some particular reason why black Americans our last and it's not it has nothing to do with this mythical system of racism and white supremacy because if that's the logic then please explain to me how blacks from every other place the world over can come here to America to live in the land of opportunity and freedom and they succeed I could take a poor black man from Brazil or a poor black man from Togo or I could take a poor black man from Haiti, or I could take a black man from Panama, Costa Rica, I could take a black man from anywhere in the world, and set him down with the same skills, the same opportunities that you have, and I promise you, that brother will have created for himself a business, that woman will have found herself a reputable husband, and build a family correctly, and yet, for some reason here in black America, we're falling the opposite way, we're regressing, instead of going up on the charts and actually excelling year after year, making profit after profit, we're getting broker and broker, both in the financial sense and, of course, in spirit and in truth. So, how do we rectify that? Well, the first thing is, before you get on this arc, you don't have to face some truths. The situation is screwed up, and I think we can all agree that it is. But we don't all agree why it is for the same reasons. And obviously, some of us are pointing inwardly, and some of us are pointing externally. But let me get to the point. Y'all gonna have to forgive me. I'm, in, I'm enjoying a good smoke first thing in the morning. It's a morning ritual. Next to my set of push-ups. The reality is this. Whenever you point out, you have to uplift the community. You have to say this. You have to say that. What's happening is, you're just simply sweeping this shit under your rug. Now, granted, sometimes you gotta put some things under the rug, and hopefully nobody notices. But when you have the rug being upheld by inches thick, inches, inches thick of dust and dirt and grime and debris, that it's clearly noticeable. You have to be a goddamn fool to think that somebody is not going to see it and point it out saying, hey, you probably should clean up your house because the dirt and dust is so thick that the mattress is, excuse me, mattress, the mat, the rug, 
the uh, upholstery, if you will, is floating off the floor, literally, being held up by your garbage. It looks disgusting. So it is when people say, Azriel, you need to uplift the community, you need to uplift the women, you need to do this. No, you shuffle bucket knuckle dragon buffoon. What I need to do is tell you how to clean your house. Because apparently, if you're not cleaning your house, but you expect you to come into it, I might be happy with what I see and don't want to be bothered with you. So there it is again, exactly why I'm pointing this out. Because the reality is, when we ever talk about the community, there are people who are talking about issues because they are important. Not because we want to feel above the, the common Negro. The common Negro that likes to relish in his own shit is nothing more than a pig. He is completely content to lay, lay about in the muck of the mire, living his day in and out, doing absolutely nothing, but complains when his food is taken away and is frightened when it's time to slaughter and he's on the chopping block. I mean to tell you all this to say this. The reality is, whenever we talk about uplifting the community, and I keep saying this because I want to drive this home continually, it is not about the actual uplifting of the community. Because if you listen to what people are saying, if you listen to what I am saying, it is uplifting the community. I'll give you another example. I'm a person who has friends and colleagues of different faiths and beliefs. And some of them are wicked. And this is no shot against people who are wicked. But a lot of them seem to say they don't give evil a name because if you give evil a name, it has power. But the problem with that line of thinking is that even if you refuse to acknowledge it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean it goes away. And it doesn't mean for any particular point or purpose that it won't reach out and drag your black ass down. So in other words, for every time you say uplift the community and not wanting to talk about these issues, these issues still persist. And we've seen this because this has been the same mantra for over 20 years. And instead of actually progressing, we've completely regressed to the point where now a large population of young black men are in jail and a large population of young black women are mothers before their wives. Here's some food for thought and enclosing on this nice Tuesday morning. If by any chance you have any modicum of self-preservation, if by any chance you have, for your own, your own sake, wishing to survive, wishing to be better, you're going to have to face some unfortunate and uncomfortable truths. That number one, the black community is in the toilet for several reasons, amongst which Voting Democrat is a problem, amongst which having children out of wedlock is a problem. And I've gone on record many a time saying I have contributed to that problem, and now I have to work extra hard to ensure that the child that I had illegitimately is a productive member of society as best as I can. You're going to have to face the facts that nobody owes you a handout, and this world does not give a crap about your plight and suffering. It only cares if you are fit and by which I mean you are able to overcome those difficulties in order to make something of yourself. It, of course, but finally, the most uncomfortable truth you have to face is that no one is going to lift a finger to help you. You are alone in this world. And so only the way you survive is by banding together with like-minded folks for a common goal which is to prosper, to survive. And until you understand and recognize these concepts, you will continually to struggle. Excuse me, you will continue, I don't know why I say continually, you will continue to struggle. And before you point out, hey Azriel, you're talking a whole bunch of Java jibber jabber. Let's again go back to what I pointed out at the start of this video. When blacks from other countries can come here to America and obtain education, obtain financial freedom, obtain peace and security the problem not by necessity is the system but we do know the common problem here in every issue you have it's you 
So when you see me standing at the top of the arc, after I have slammed those doors home, and you keep begging, Azriel let me in, I'm sorry to tell you, but if I open that door, we all going to die. So while the door is still open, get on board. 22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. They see that the whites are so evenly divided that every time they vote, uh, the race is so close, they have to go back and count the votes all over again. And that, that, which means that any block, any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You can keep Johnson in Washington, D.C., or you can send him back to his Texas cotton patch. You're the one who sent Kennedy to Washington. You're the one who put the present Democratic administration in Washington, D.C. The whites were evenly divided. It was the fact that you threw 80% of your votes behind the Democrats that put the Democrats in the White House. This, when you see this, you can see that the Negro vote is the key factor. And despite the fact that you are in a position to, de to be the determining factor, what do you get out of it? The Democrats have been in Washington, D.C. only because of the Negro vote. They've been down there four years. And all other legislation they wanted to bring up, they brought it up and gotten it out of the way, and now they bring up you. And now they bring up you. You put them first, and they put you last. Because you're a chump. A political chump. In Washington, D.C., in the House of Representatives, there are 257 who are Democrats. Only 177 are Republicans. In the Senate, there are 67 uh, Democrats. Only 33 are Republicans. The party that you bass controls two-thirds of the House of Representatives and the Senate, and still they can't keep their promise to you, because you're a chump. Anytime you throw your weight behind a political party that controls two-thirds of the government and that party can't keep the promise that it made to you during election time and you are dumb enough to walk around continuing to identify yourself with that party, you're not only a chump but you're a traitor to your race.